Gaming is one of the most popular hobbies in the world, and for the vast majority of people that play them, it serves as a fantastic way to de-stress and unwind after a long day. Who doesn't want to finish a long cold shift at work to come home and lose 14 games in a row? I know I do. But if you, like me, have been playing them for the majority of your life, you will probably have heard something along the lines of, you're addicted to that thing, at some point in time. In reality, this is usually just hyperbole, because god forbid we enjoy ourselves in a way they don't quite understand, right? But could there be a shimmer of truth to what they say? Are video games really addicting? And where would the line between a fun hobby and addiction be? Well, to put it plainly, it's true that video game addiction is a real thing, but I feel like it can be pretty misrepresented in films and daytime TV shows as some teenager that just likes to play for a few hours a night after finishing their homework. Playing lots of games is fine on its own. It's when there is a complete lack of self-control and an impact on a person's ability to do other everyday tasks that there is an issue. The World Health Organization defines it as prioritizing gaming to the point where other things are left aside. Being unable to control the impulse to play games, even if you know that playing them will have some sort of negative or severe consequence, there is an impact on the person's social life, education, or even physical health. And these symptoms continue to last for at least 12 months. The last one does confuse me a bit because the way I see it, as soon as these behaviours start, that could be argued as the beginning of the addiction. So now we know exactly what video game addiction is defined as, how are the actual video games addicting? Throughout the entire history of gaming, people that create games have pretty much needed to add some sort of addicting element to a game, because at the end of the day, that's how they make money. Games at the arcade either needed to be challenging or fun enough to replay over and over, because it's the difference between getting one coin and getting five coins from that person. But over the years, games have not only developed in terms of gameplay, but in terms of how they keep people playing. Instead of making games so hard that they barely ever will be able to make it to the end or win, developers have opted for new strategies to keep people playing. In subscription-based MMO games like World of Warcraft, RuneScape, or Wizard101, there is a ridiculous amount of grinding and leveling for you to do, and realistically, that's going to span over the course of months, years, hell, even decades for some people. And many players absolutely love this, and are entirely dedicated to their accounts being a high level with rare items. Some developers just absolutely stuff their games with achievements or unlocks to give the player something to aim for each session, even if they've beaten the game. Some games even use a loot box system to reward players for leveling up and playing the game each day. Oh, wait, never mind. But the thing that all of these strategies have in common is dopamine. I probably don't have to explain it much, but dopamine is essentially the chemical that acts as a reward center. It makes you feel good and happy, and is something that can be triggered really easily while playing games. Every single win, skin, or kill on Jin gives us that little bit of dopamine, and we will unknowingly chase that even if we have to play through games that frustrate us. It's this chase that can lead to things like not looking after yourself, or ignoring your other daily tasks to play games. Maybe there is a new high score you want to get your hands on. Or you might want to see how high you can rank in a competitive mode. Maybe you don't even have a set goal, and just want to keep getting better and better at a game, or expanding your world. All of these are activating that fun little pleasure hormone in our brains. Game developers obviously know this, and there are some that want to take advantage of it by enticing you with a fast fix of that happy hormone. Mobile games are fucking criminals for it. Often they'll do something that forces you to wait a certain amount of real world time, unless you pay them gems or diamonds or whatever to speed up whatever process this is. Maybe it's Clash of Clans and you want your base to be better than others, and so you end up paying gems to speed up the building time. Or Candy Crush that'll help you out on a hard level for some of your hard earned money, because they know that some people can't wait to get their fix. The cause for some players' addictions aren't actually even because of the game itself. In a lot of cases, many people find a sense of community within the game that they might just not have in real life. This can be especially true with role-playing games, because they really hone in on that escapism aspect even more. But this is where it starts getting hard to draw a line between what is socialising and what is addiction. Because it might not even be the game that is keeping them there, it could just be the social aspect. A lot of the time, we do go to video games for fun, or at least to escape into a virtual world, and this isn't what addiction is about. At the end of the day, gaming is one of the most interactive hobbies going, and provides us with these experiences that nothing else can quite come to. The distinction between it being a hobby and being an addiction can sometimes be a little blurred, but it all comes down to how it affects the player. If this hobby has become something more than just a hobby, and starts overtaking other things in their lives and becomes the only thing that matters to them, well, whether it's classed as an addiction or not, that just isn't too healthy. I wouldn't have really ever considered myself an addict with video games, 
but I know that there's been periods of my life where almost all of my free time and effort went towards playing video games. At its worst, I would sometimes spend up to 14 hours a day playing League of Legends. Obviously I'd get up to grab some food or use the toilet or whatever, but this was definitely not a healthy relationship with gaming. Some people even sadly die because they neglect their own health due to this addiction. However, I really do want to emphasise how video games are not inherently a bad thing, nor are they an addiction to the vast majority of people. Gaming has offered so many amazing benefits for society overall, the ability to connect with friends in a virtual environment, the fantastic competitive spirit it finds in people, and the mere fact that it gives people a safe place to escape into. And this is just to name a few of the big ones. And most people, in fact, don't get addicted to playing games. It's all about balancing and living a healthy lifestyle. A couple of hours of gaming a night will not turn you into some freak of society. Hell, I'd even argue that games like VRChat do the opposite to you, and let you connect with people and learn different social skills. So overall, yeah, video games can be addicting. And if you do get addicted to them, it can sometimes be pretty impactful in your life. But the reality is that they usually aren't. Most games do want you to get somewhat addicted to playing, and these practices might even end up having some legal issues in the future, who knows. But in my opinion, it's completely about maintaining a healthy balance in life. If you're playing games a lot, make sure you spend at least a bit of time each day doing something else to balance it out, have a walk, spend a little time chatting with friends or family outside of games, do some friggin' yoga if that floats your boat. It's really important to make sure you don't fall into that trap that video games want you to fall into. A lot of them want you to spend as much time as possible playing the games, and if you see yourself falling victim to video game addiction, it might be a good idea to take a step back for a while, and just assess how healthy this relationship is with the game. And lastly, you've just got to make sure that you look after yourself and stay happy and healthy, because, hey, what good is all that XP when you're not enjoying the game and life itself?